a speeding vehicle can be stopped by a small red light. And that's a good thing if you're trying to cross the road. It's important that these traffic signals function correctly to keep things moving efficiently and safely. Day and night, seven days a week, in all lighting conditions, and in all weather conditions. The equipment used to control the traffic signals is kept inside a metal cabinet somewhere near the intersection. Each cabinet has a number. This cabinet is for intersection number 883, the number after the dash. In Boone, the number before the dash is always 11. This is because Watauga County, along with seven other counties, is in Division 11. North Carolina has 14 different divisions. Next time you're traveling, you can tell what division you're in by looking for the nearest traffic signal cabinet. You can find more details, and probably more accurate details, from the ncdot.gov website. The North Carolina Department of Transportation is always interested in public outreach and education. So the field technicians were willing to show us what's inside a typical cabinet at intersection 1010, New Market and Highway 421. You can open both sides of this cabinet. Here the back side lets you see the cables and the connections to the terminal blocks. Well, this, is, this is basically the back side of the cabinet. Um, right here is the back side of your controller, that's your, your main programmable computer basically is what it is. Um, right here's where all your field terminals hook up as far as your signal heads and wiring and stuff. Uh, your loops are basically right here on the side. Of course you'll find a lot of red, yellow, and green color-coded wires just like you would expect to find in a traffic light controller cap. Here you can see all the equipment that's inside a typical traffic signal cabinet. Notice the light and the ventilation fan at the top. This is your controller. It's the main controller for the intersection. It's a programmable PC, basically. Um, these are your detectors, that, which picks up traffic. Uh, these are flash transfer relays. They'll engage when the light goes into flash if there's a problem for some reason. Uh, these are load switches, all these right here, that's basically outputting to the signal head to, to change the colors. Uh, you got flash transfer relays right here which will engage if there's a problem and the intersection goes into flash. This right here is a conflict monitor, it's 2010 ECL. It basically monitors everything that the controller's doing. Uh, for some reason if the controller malfunctions and makes two sides green at the same time, this is going to catch it and then it'll throw into the flash within like a tenth of a second or something. I think basically your cabinet itself, with all the equipment in it, you're looking at somewhere around $10,000 worth of equipment. And that's not counting the, the heads and stuff out in the road as far as wire goes. Um, One of the more common ones are people pulling up past the stop bar. If yeah. they pull up past the stop bar, it's going to lose their detection and they're never going to get a light. Pulling over the white line painted on the road means you're probably not over the detection loop, shown in red. This blue car will be detected. This pink car probably won't. These loops don't detect the weight of the vehicle. They're metal detectors. Bicycles and motorcycles Vehicles made of fiberglass or other materials won't always trigger the loop, but the loop sensitivity can be adjusted. It's nice when a new road is built and the inductive loops are hidden under the pavement, but you can usually see where the pavement has been cut. The loops are installed and covered with some waterproof sealant. Notice how the corners have angled cuts, so the wire loop doesn't have to risk damage by bending around a 90 degree turn. The saw blade can't cut a curve, 
but these cuts allow the wire loop to bend around smaller angles. Another thing to notice at an intersection is the way they program the lights to have what they call an all-red phase. Watch as the main street lights on the left change from yellow to red. All the lights are red. And then the lights for the side street on the right change to green. This gives the main street traffic a little time to clear the intersection before signaling the side street traffic to proceed. Technically, the traffic should have been cleared when the yellow light was on, but sometimes people try to scoot through. We've all done it. Watch again for the all red phase as the lights change back. While it's perfectly safe to have traffic signals showing all red lights in all directions, we obviously don't want green lights crossing the directions of an intersection. Remember that our technicians pointed out the conflict monitor and the flash relays. This right here is a conflict monitor, it's 2010 ECL. Uh, you got flash transfer relays right here which will engage if there's a problem and the intersection goes into flash. What does flash mean? It means they're flashing yellow lights for what they determine to be the main street and flashing red lights for the side streets. Flash mode doesn't always mean there's a problem. Some intersections are designed to be in flash mode all the time. And some intersections are programmed to enter flash mode at night when the traffic load drops. So, next time you walk across a busy street or zoom through a big intersection, think about the hidden technology that's keeping you moving and keeping you safe. Traffic signals make your commutes much better. The dreadful alternative would be putting up stop signs everywhere at every intersection.